Hello there, and welcome to game two of this best of three semi final series. And you're now looking at Inca Unas Vermat. An orange pest thinks that no one wants to hear his opinions, but I want to hear his opinion. And I know that he's a little bit bashful about Inca Unas' chances in this game. Orange pest, I've just doxed you, bro. What uh, do you, you really get, think? Tell us what you really think. That's what you're here this. for. That's what you're uh, here for. Okay. <laughs> we want to know. Okay, honestly, I don't think Inca has a good chance of winning this. No, is, is Vermite isn't bad, but it's not amazing. And you need to be kind of on top of your aggression as Vermite. And I don't know if he has it, but I, I'm always happy to be proven wrong. So we'll have to see. And... and... I know Orange Pest isn't always right. He's very... And I'm never... I'm very rarely right. <laughs> and I do know one thing for certain as, at the moment, Orange Pest. Quirits may or may not be beating a Sildur in their first game. So anything is possible, good sir. And I'm not going to count Inca Una out, although I would, uh, on paper, agree. Well, let's wait and see. Now, let's... The commander choices. Armored Assault Tactics. Love Nest is now going this rather than Guard Motor Coordination. What do you think about Ooh. that? I'm thinking we're gonna see a sniper. So that's what I'm feeling now. The very. Because, like, on paper, this commander is good for the late game, but do you. Like, obviously, you wanna play for late game, but. There's, like, this awkward middle space where this commander essentially gives you nothing for, like, essentially, like, 10, 15 minutes aside from the radio interception. Alright, I'm gonna invoke angry YouTube comments now, Orange Pest. The reason he's not playing this qualifier is because he got his vax third vaccine and paid his debt to society. Moving on swiftly, <laughs> conscripts forced <laughs> away, pioneers pushing up. We've got an advancing conscript in the south, Grenadiers staying behind the light cover and keeping them at bay for now. Good play by Inca in that respect. His commander choice is a classic, Lightning War Doctrine. This is uh, straight up my favourite commander in the game, I think. I, I love it. You just do all these like massive all out assaults with your G43s and your mass sprint, and the planes are just amazing. And Tigers still solid. Yeah. Gonna have to make some plays though. Relief infantry and tactical movements as well are really underrated abilities. I mean, obviously running fast is is kind of not underrated. It's kind of just there. But relief infantry is really useful if you're behind or you're getting beaten up. I know maybe not so much much in tournament games, but certainly in auto match. It certainly has its issues, but I want to point something out with Lovenist's uh, build order here. You went for triple okay. conscript and then engineer. What's wrong with Very that? interesting. He not does sure it every why. time. You're not sure why? Yeah. He's the ultimate booby trapper of all time. He's got boobies coming out of his back, his eyes, his armpits, his tripwire flares, mines. Two, two's better than one. Yeah, but he did it late. That's what I'm confused oh, about. I see. Usually you open up with it, right? But finishing with it, it's kind of weird. Mm. But I guess he wanted to prioritize getting the sandbags up, which is understandable. Mm. Yeah, it, yeah, I suppose. Maybe it's a, also, don't forget, Love Nest is very... Uh, you, you might be right there, to be honest. But Love Nest is very attuned to map build orders. He writes them down. He makes notes on which points he can cap in which order. Just like um, the Co-1 top players used to do back in the day when there was only three maps and there's still only three maps actually but um when it's when amelie for example has been played that often it may be that he prefers to get conscripts out just based on the spread of the points because they're all in a line outside your base aren't they yeah true um inca's made a bit of a misplay by the way itself you can look at his natural point not being capped he never caps that one i don't know why it's free income baby that's 2-2-2 two, two, two time. 2-2-2 two, two, two time is now later. Yeah, but I mean, he's getting map control. Not the worst thing to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Nagano, I bet Loveness sometimes in real life, like, shift commands tripwire flare whenever there's a dull moment. If there's, like, a silence in a conversation with with Love Nest. He's probably in his mind thinking, I could be planting a tripwire flare right now. <laughs> we have an isolated sector. Wow, this is not a bad start for Inca though, to be fair. Maybe I'm yeah, just a that super fair last game too. <laughs> Oh yeah, true. <laughs> we all saw how that went. He had the perfect start and it went so badly so quickly. 
But no, I agree, this is actually really solid. But we are getting, I think, I love this is gonna go for a half track here. It's gonna be pretty on time. Probably earlier than the 2 to 2, actually. <laughs> oh, rifle nade. Was a fakey. And uh, he still lost out to the Mauser fire anyway. Can you can you cancel? Are you good at cancelling the the animation for the rifle nade after the sound is made? Uh, I'm not spastic, so no. <laughs> hey, that one, that's uh, an interesting choice of word. The words and, and phrases used by Orange Best may not necessarily be representative of AE corporations. Please still consider sponsoring me. <laughs> it's never going to happen. <laughs> No, it's just faking out rifle grenades. It's like super. You have to be really on top of it, and I is don't. Is it difficult? Like... It's also like nades on retreat are difficult because the model isn't always facing the right way, so you yeah. can't always time it. You know. I've done it where I've like tried faking someone out and then accidentally just thrown the grenade anyway. But look, an idiot after. The other two two is coming out a bit later than the half track, but not bad. <laughs> Per se, I don't think it's like the worst time you've got 2 2 2. Orange Pest, we're, I, I hate to tell you, but you're going for awareness training. And this M5 has absolute awareness of the fact it's about to brutalize this MG. The MG, uh. <laughs> More angry YouTube comments. Last time I made a joke about, do you know, gender pronouns, which is just silly, oh, it's just modern silliness. And I made a joke that was clearly ironic. And somebody says, I'm never watching this caster again. Because <laughs> I said a stug represents as him, uh, his or him. I mean, he didn't know I was joking. <laughs> uh, people are so sensitive, dude. They're, they're sensitive in both ways, though. It's so funny. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> they're both ways sensitive. Um, M17, just doing what M17s do. This was Isilda's kind of mark made on the community. Really made it like... A thing. It was surprising. It, it came as a response to like the Austrup and Times, I think. Well, he's made some great plays with it on Amelie Fields in particular, as Silda has. Nagano can attest to that. He's in chat. He's probably getting a little bit of uh, PTSD right now, actually. But this is Loveness wielding it this time. Loveness is ticking along nicely. He's just had his Zisk gun coming out just to really thwart. The 222. In the east, Grens are on the march. Conscripts repositioning to get behind the flatbed truck. These Grens are not going to have a fun time. But he, he did health. lift um, the combat engineer stuff past there, which is going to really just hit his fuel supplies. Right, got a G43 grenade off there, but they, they don't trigger the mine on their way back home. Doesn't mean the other one won't. It's not actually a perfectly placed mine, to be honest. It's kind of in between several algorithms of retreat paths. Do you it know what I mean? Strikes, it strikes me as an anti-tank mine, even though yes. it's a generalist mine, you know? I was going to say that, because tanks will trigger, but infantry on retreat no, and capping points won't necessarily do so. We've just opened up a new branch of coming here as science, Orange Pest. I mean, it's almost, I think, every time you press towards the munitions point, essentially they're going to take that road. I'm a bit rusty on my pathing. But it's definitely a hot spot. Inca will inevitably run his tanks over there at one point or another. Baby's asking about the science of G43 work. Um, Tightrope's got some good videos on retreats and um, killing people on retreat, etc. But generally speaking, you know, they're best at mid range. And on the move, they still retain a lot of their damage, so you just have to attune yourself to that and get a feel for them, to be honest. So, coming here is a lot about feel, and you can only get that feel through constant practice. So just get out there and play, and you'll pick it up. It's a preference, too. It's a lot of debate on LMG versus G43s, but personally, I prefer the G43, but a lot of people prefer the LMGs. But then again, that's because your profile is one of movement. You prefer yeah. to be mobile, and you don't like to sit behind cover. That's, uh, that's uh, you know, your ADHD speaking, I guess. Yeah. Very true. I, I can't. I just can't. Like, when I run up against someone who just sits and stares, I just I lose my mind. I can't take it. <laughs> That's why Quirits is your least favorite opponent of all time. As the combat yeah. enemy has advanced, the pack is that set up. Place bread. Ah! Double whammy. 
This game's ticking along nicely, though. Zis is pushing up, as is the newly built Maxim. So he's got one of each animal from Tier 2, which is nice to see. A little bit of variety from Love Nest. It's a good army. I'm liking how he's stabilized. He's slowly just waiting for that uh, half to roll out. Now he's just going to patiently, you know, just the engagements one by one and set up his battle line again. And I think Inca might fall for this trap again, where he just just doesn't really find an opening. It's just going to be really brutal. Mm, it is. If Love Nest is able to set up, as we all know he can and likely will, it may become increasingly harder for Inca to play through it. So we need constant aggression, even if he's playing as Vermat. Vermat can be very aggressive from my personal experience. It's just, you have to like, it's a very all-in kind of aggression. Well, speaking of which, uh, the mine has now been triggered by the Grandiers in the East. The mine that offered a, opened a philosophical debate. I think that was intentional uh, by Loveless. They're trying to bait them in with the AT gun just to get that mine out of the way, I suppose. Highly likely. 2 2 is looking for an angle on the sandbags here, so trying to f f find its way around the side. Then worries about the time it'll take the Zist to get there, perhaps. No, let's just do some clever, clever driving as Inca. Meanwhile, in the centre, it's MG and Mortar dominating the victory point over there. Love Nest is ticking along nicely. We should surely... No, he's going to get the nade package first. He's not going to concentrate on trying to get the uh, mechanised armour company out. Uh, we got a flare from Love Nest in the centre as well, so he's going to spot that uh, MG42 and immediately set up a rush on it. Not a bad idea. To be honest, it's one of those MG positions you can probably barrage blindly. <laughs> it's always there. <laughs> Yeah, but only, I think you get like a small accuracy bonus if you have line of sight. But this is a, true. True. Just looking at his line of sight, what he can see right now. You can see multiple grunts rotating through center. You can see the MV42 has moved back now, so he can react appropriately to this. Uh, any news from the Ost front, chaps? We've got Quirits, uh, is Silda still going on? Is game one finished yet? Yeah, it looked Honestly. like one of those matches that were going to get really grindy, honestly. Is it still going? I would not be surprised if it was. Still going. Quirits, I, I, I'm going to change his uh, trading card profile. <laughs> Quirits is. I'm going to find one stat. If he does really well in this tournament, I'll up his resolve and I'm going to nuke his defense. Not his defense, sorry, his offense. Yes, his offense is just... I don't know. Non-existent. It's weird. He can play offensively. He's not. His micro is fine. He just doesn't want to. He's got that Joe talisman mentality. Yeah, I suppose. I don't think it's nearly like talisman style, though. Wow. So Isilda may not be qualifying from this tournament at this rate because Quiritz is giving him hell, um, hell at the moment, and Love Nest, um, an Inca series seems a little bit less endurance based in that the first game was 30 minutes only. Yeah, and but I think Inca's got telling himself a pretty decent lead now. So he might like, I mean, I would say he's in an advantage position. But he is, um, I think he's debating if he's gonna go uh, tier four or Panzer four, because um, he has not tech the, built the tech structure yet. Yeah, tier four's up for Love Nest. And uh, interesting from Inca. He's, Getting his fuel reserves up, but as Orange Pest says, he's not uh, elected to build the support weapon. Support armor core yet? Mm. I'm wondering, I think Lumnest here is going to be forced into T4476, even though he probably wants the 85. MG's pushed up from Inca, he's got a really high line now. Using it as an offside trap. It it seem. He's also got all the forces he can push in. Is this Vermac play surprising you so far, Orange Pest? He's doing well? He's doing pretty alright, yeah. He's doing way better than I expected him to. It's a kudos. Well played for Inca. Bringing some of that oil back down to the Romanian heartlands. The enemy is attempting to steal but like, the problem is he's not getting a killing blow. He's not getting wipes, right? He's, like, he's getting map control, yes. He's not getting the kills. But I guess Soviets, you know, not getting the kills can literally spell death for you. You have to somehow mm. kill something essential at some point. 
Okay, so his his Panzer IV timing was pretty lousy. That's uh, 30 fuel in the bank at the time of construction. At 26 income per minute, you can see how that's like one minute, maybe 20 seconds of delay. Uh, and it's it's it, that delay is the difference between the T-34 hitting before it. So yeah. uh, Inca's done that before. I've seen him do it in cast before. His timings Enemy haven't been perfect. I think he, he likes to prioritize just battle control and just pushing and moving and stuff. And that can really let your base stuff just fall on the wayside. Oh, these three grunts are in for a bad time. They're going to get hit by the truck immediately. Oh, and they almost felt it there. Inca it's with good his... game sense. I think he sensed the sandbag and knowing he didn't have the pack support just backs away. Waits for the P4 instead. Yeah, exactly. Sense something was up. He knows this M17 is lurking in the Never Realm. You can also hear it moving, don't forget everybody. So here's the P parts of Beyond the Top now. Second pack as well. Solid choice. Mm. If I was in Garrett now, I would almost want to queue up tier 4. Let's go with the Tiger here. It's I just saw really something easy. amazing. The algorithm on retreat for the conscripts changed direction in anticipation of the Panzer IV hitting the fence. So the Panzer IV hit the fence and destroyed it, but they'd already started moving as though the gap in the fence was about to appear. It was what? really interesting. <laughs> like a glitch in the Matrix. Like, what? That is they... weird. I swear that just happened. Did anybody else pick up on that? It must have like 300 viewers, surely. Everyone just saw what I just saw. Or am I, am I, am I going crazy? It could be that I'm an old man and I'm crazy, so bear that in mind, everybody. Yep, Zany saying what? I'm definitely just crazy. Okay, it's fine. Okay, so you're just... Delusional! That's okay. That's the plain code through Dustia. <laughs> it did look like this stutter. Thank you, QZZ. I think it's because the algorithm, like, changed as the... Um, basically, the wall disappeared before it did graphically or something. It was weird. I'm just doing a bit of a misplay there. This D34 just running over his own sandbags. Oh my god, they're at one hour and eight minutes, and <laughs> we're in game two. Our game yeah, two is 20 that, minutes that, that in. Match, it's going to be one of those, you know. Oh, Grant's on the north side. Looking to get wiped here if uh, Lumnus capitalizes. Oh, yep, these ones. Good call, Orange Best. Had Lumnus been a bit, just a bit more APM on those uh, conscripts right there, he could have easily killed that. Uh, Grant squad. Certainly could. Need to get our uh, heads back in the game because this game is very fair and equitable. Yeah, I think it's pretty even actually. I think uh, Inca's gonna have to utilize his fuel advantage and uh, Lumnus at this point is gonna have to go for some crucial picks, but the half track might go down. All the packs were lining up for it. Safe though for now. Gren's forced away. Manpower casualties incurred for Inca. Luckily for him, these are casualties he can afford to take right now. Although I'm not sure I agree with this pioneer Enemy pick. I think he should be either going for another uh, for mortar or just tier four, another Panzer four. He doesn't well, need the extra He's about to right get now. to 120 fuel, isn't he? So it's odd, but the, there's one one way it's fine, Orange Pest, and I'll explain. If he's stalling for Tiger, he's going to need Vetted Pioneers to keep it in the game as much as possible. So in that sense, if he is stalling for Tiger, it's an absolutely fine decision. But I, I, I don't disagree with what you said there. Just, I just find, like, yeah, he's preparing, like, he doesn't even have sweepers on his Pioneers yet, so he doesn't have the extra, like, repair speed. So it's oh, just, I know. Just those That's... tiny little things. Well, these are the things that he needs to improve his game on. He needs to watch these casts back, these replays back. These are margins uh, that matter. You need everything. And that's why I'm so frustrated with small things that players don't do sometimes. Even a Silda doesn't do everything possible. It's, it's hard in the heat of battle. Especially in a tournament too, you know. They're always getting you, essentially. Unless you're someone like Lumnus or Silda, obviously. Part of steel. 
certainly. <laughs> He's very mechanical in that sense. Overall, though, I'm very impressed with the uh, pack play of Inca so far. Really on the ball, predicting the T-34, and always trying to stay one step ahead. He's holding him out, essentially. See that? He's going for a Panzer IV anyway, so no Tiger Storm. He could have gone for this Panzer IV earlier as well, but uh, these small differences. Anyway, let's have a little look at what Loveness doing. And to be honest, one of the things casting vertically on the map uh, from south to north is you end up focusing way more on the southern player. So let's put some concerted effort into understanding what Love Nest is up to. Two Ziskuns. Hmm. Um, he's got his conscripts. Now seven men. Two Maxims, a mortar. M17's not a Vet 3 yet, which is actually quite surprising. Oh, yeah. the Ziskuns are opening up on the P4 in the center, though. Spotting for it with the combat engineers. He's got two more shots coming in. So to bring back what we're talking about with Lumnus, I think his game plan here is actually going to be an IS-2. IS-2, the IL-2 is is really potent combo on this map. Because everything is going to be so tightly packed, it needs to play into it, he's going to have a massive field day. And because Inca is over, not over investing per se, but he's investing a lot in mediums, it means the IS-2 will be able to cut everything out. Panzer fours are assembling in the west. He's lost the center for now, but it's a classic struggle at the moment on Amalu Fields. He's a bit of smoke to work his way back into things. Interestingly, the 222 hasn't gotten Vet 2 yet, which is the most important bit. That's where you get the uh, extra sight lines. You can really start just hammering support teams using the sight of line. Line of sight. Yep, sight of line, light of sight, and we've got 64 kills for Inca. So surprising that he's not been able to get veterancy on some of these units, but it must be that he's mostly done fighting with his Grens. You do have a good tally of kills, to be fair. Oh, half track. Go down. There we go, double packs pick up the half track. That's a nice win for Inca. 222 pushes up the east. Looking to force away the Maxim, but that Maxim's going to hold strong from Love Nest. In fact, he's going to try and get his Zeds in position, but it doesn't matter because here comes the tactical movements of the Grenadiers with the G43. This is recoil in fear, but we've got a hard line of Maxims and Moz in the gunfire to keep them at bay. Uh, I did like this play initially, but the Panzer Force were not in position to capitalize, but now Love Nest is in a position to react and he immediately queues up a, an emergency T-34 to 5 essentially. Just getting ready for them. Yeah, Ink has pulled the trigger on his aggression. Getting into it. Yeah, that could have been a lot meatier. He could have gotten some casualties there. As it was, he just killed the M17 to start things off, and then he thought, right, now my time is now. Didn't quite have the units marshaled in the correct locations for the push. Um, had, had he just been slightly quicker with the Panzer Force, that could have been a game under right there. Good point by Baby in chat, of course, with uh, munitions increasing. The Stukas beckoning. 225 for Stuka at close air support. That push could be very different with the T-34s involved and Goering's finest um, trailing death from the sky above. We got our first T-34 to 5 hitting the field, so I guess Loveness isn't going for an IS-2. I mean... 85s are probably the best medium tanks in the game currently, so it's not unsurprising. It's got to ah. be careful. It's funny we say currently as though there's more patches to come. <laughs> well, the meta Rip. might shift, you know. Oh, good point, good point. Yep. I mean, we think everything is set in place, and then maybe someone finds out, oh, like, KV ones are secretly super old. Well, look at the 120 mil. I mean, that was barely played, like, six months ago. You know, it was played, but it wasn't the meta. And now it's meta in every game mode. Yeah, it's so good at basically like it, it destroyed the matchup. Mm, pretty much. We had to actually nerf it in the first unanimous vote we've had since Tawny Mode came into existence, actually. Oops, I, I didn't vote because I wasn't going to play, but I definitely agree with the nerf. It was. It's just, you could just sit there and pay with it, you know, and just immediately just get, like, And, and that's wipe. why it was anti-competitive. Uh, it required yeah. no micro, and it just literally wiped squads. <laughs> I also, from a self-realization standpoint, I had to sit back and think, why was I able to beat a player, player like Tightrope in a game? 
Um, why was that possible? And then I remembered, oh yeah, he did say my 120mm wiped three of his squads. <laughs> so I was like, hmm. Yeah, m just maybe it's a little bit off. Yeah, just maybe. A little bit. Um, yeah, we just made its uh, damage 80% of what it used to be in tawny mode. And it can, instead of retreating, it can reverse now. Uh, but the jury's still out on the second bit. But just that 20% damage nerf seems to be enough. Um, something I want to point out with Inca Una, by the way. His tech is tier 4 now. I don't have the building out yet, so he's not getting the manpower decrease. But the tiger will be on its way soon, play. Okay. We are losing the sector. That's true about the buildings. Sometimes worth going, is it just for the manpower? It's, uh, it's an underrated change. It makes your grand side trade way more favorably. Isn't it 28 manpower for reinforcements? Yeah. That's, that's pretty big, actually. This is lined up on the Panzer IV, taking it out there. Nice pickup for Love Nest. Inca Una overextended and got caught out right in the center with a tank in a bad part of town. One slip up, man. It's just boom. Panzer IV can Gone on the blink of an eye. It's one of those things that really makes the T-35 amazing, though. It's just... In that situation, had that had that been a T-3485, there's a good chance he could have lived because of that one extra shot it takes to kill. Katusha next for Love Nest, and this Katusha will be largely uncountered unless we see some mad dive from the 222, perhaps. Um, interestingly, from Inca's perspective, if he's going Tiger next, Orange Pest, that Panzerful wouldn't have given him the pop cap space. So he now has the pop cap space. Oh, true. But what, what it could have done was serve as like a setup, right? We do like a super big all in push with mm. tons of force. And then if one dies, you shrug, fall on the tiger, right? And then the tiger yeah, yeah. comes in and just finishes the job. Theoretically, anyway. That's why you're the good player and I'm just the caster man. Gren's having a torrid time in the east there. Seven man cons gunning them down. Here comes that Katusha. Meanwhile, in the center, two Mangrens were able to cap over there. And we have a safe retreat in the east. Everything's illuminated right now for uh, Love Nest. You can see everything. And that Katusha is going to be looking at those packs. I'm pretty sure I'm getting ready for this now. Mm, yeah, there you can see it moving. It's going to be a max range shot, though. He might have missed his opportunity here. He may just wait. Yeah, well, he's not moving. This could. No, he's not fighting. Okay. Very patient from Love Nest. Yeah. Well, I'll save it. But the surprise factor on the Katusha is huge. He's getting the Zisses into position. He's not even moving up yet, actually. He's going to get line of sight the hard way. Push in slowly. Packs reposition. They know something's up. I suppose he could be waiting for the planes as well for that super surprise factor where he comes in with the Katusha and the planes. MG42 no, wiped Katusha's in the fighting. west. Yes, indeed. The packs are overextending. They actually push. Now they're going to reverse through the second volley. This could be bad. Nice pattern there from Inca's perspective. Although not everything's safe yet. Oh, 2-2-2 two, 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 taken out by the Katusha and Zis combo. Meanwhile, Gren dies possibly in the east. Just about surviving Lucky. there. Uh, MG42 goes down on the left side by the T4485 as well. Yeah, and the Garens can't take it. Or will they? Will they? That's dangerous. I think he had to risk it there. The MG42 is too vital for his army. But now, it won't collapse, really. Tiger mm. is coming soon. And Love Nest is going to be in a really strong position to qualify versus the winner of Quiritz Asilda. Um, Orange Pass and I are going to have a huge break in between the semi-final and the final because apparently we've got an epic mega game can still going. Can somebody give us a bit of a spoiler? Castle Alvedi's channel? I believe it's 2v2 cash games or something. I'm, I'm definitely going to need to break my, my voices. So. Yeah, take a break, dude. Yeah. Oh, no, not now, though. No, no, not now. After. <laughs> I'm not going to bail on you mid, uh, mid cast. 10 VPs Quirits. Jesus Christ. 1 hour 20 minutes. I kind of want to see this a little bit. It's highly unprofessional of me. No, no. Focus on the game. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Definitely doing that. Gren's pushing east. MG through the center. It's a vet 3 MG. We've got...
Hands of Four getting into perfect position there, but there was a little bit of cover in the way. He's going to be fine. Where's that Katusha with the follow up volley? It's ready again, Orange Pest. Mm, I think we might see an all in from Inca in just a moment. The Tiger is going to be on the field shortly. He's got the planes. He could even go for a sprint, really, so we'll see now. A bit, bit careful, which is good, but. I feel like Inca's fallen into the classic Wehrmacht trap of like almost trying to grind it out with the Soviets now. Yeah. He's, well, it's, you don't want to trade with the seven man columns forever. You'll just bleed out over time. Yes, and you run into those sandbags too, and it's just so painful. Well, there we go, and the um, the Silda Quirit's first game has come to an end! One hour, 20 minutes! Who won? At least it wasn't Crossroads causing those long games yesterday. Thank God for that, because we put a lot of work into trying to make that one not quite as uh, long. <laughs> Tiger's on the field, by the way. Oh, nice. Big tank, strong tank, 88mm cannon. That's uh, my intro for the Tiger, by the way. <laughs> it's not, not as epic as it used to be. <laughs> uh, you can only do it so many times before you get <laughs> a bit tired of it. Eh? But this Tiger positioning... Oh, what around. a Katusha volley in the east! Pioneers pushed off, they were repairing, so they incur huge penalties. MG goes down, packs out of position. Grens need to help out here, because the cons might take the MG. The Tiger's also kind of out of position here. I think the Lumnus could afford to do a dive on it if he really wanted to. Oh, the Ziskun's ready for it as well. Lumnus just biding his time. He can't predict Inka Una's next play. It's difficult. We've also got Stukas fired and ready to go. He's destroying the MG. Grenz have a tough retreat path past the T-34. They change targets. Tiger keep reversing into position. This is Pursue. This is very tense. I think one slip up here and it could mean the end of the game for either player. And we know what uh, Isilda or possibly Quirits want to see. They want to see a long game two between these two. I want to see a fair grand final. All right, Loveness keeps victory point control, but he's not actually leading by that much. T thirty four's done some crew repairs. He's ready to tango once more. One thing I would like to see Loveness do is just wait for that skill playing Colin. Just be ready for it. He's using a lot of it on repair when he doesn't necessarily have to. No, he's got vetted two vets to um, combat engineers, so yeah, you're right. You can save the munitions a little bit there. Well, you know, he likes to use his flares. Just dropped another one on the center there. Getting Why pressure not? on the MG. Vision is everything in RTS games. And uh, he makes a great advantage of every utility available to him. Mine goes off there. Grenad <laughs> More mines go off there. Ah. Oh my this, god. This experience of playing <laughs> 120, me 120 manpower gone in the blink of an eye. It is painful, isn't it? Uh. Oh, Tiger bit overextending there. Lucky bounce, though, from the everything except for the third shot. Yeah, but every little, little nibble he does to this Tiger is just going to slow him down. Just force him to sit and play defensively when he can't afford to, really. And we all know the meta game with the Tiger. It's all about getting it to Veteran C2 and 3. That rate of fire at Veteran C3 is ungodly. Sees the mine and um, detonates it there with the Tiger. But uh, Loveness has got a flare overhead. He's got a Katusha that's firing. God. Good uh, prediction from Lumnus there, predicting those packs, backpedaling immediately. Yeah, not a bad idea. Just had a bit of stutter there. I thought Inca might be getting frustrated throwing the towel. Hands of four found out by long range shots from the Ziskons. This is what that vision is giving Lovenest. He's just giving superior maneuverability and anticipation of his opponent's movements. It's just Inca just doesn't have the vision to compete back. He's just getting sniped at, um, he's forced back, and then he gets sniped at again. And he just, he's not getting the counter punches he needs. Well, 
it's it's kind of like watching a player play against something that's map hacking, isn't it? And it's not obviously full hacks, but Love Ness is just using what's in the game to his advantage. Tripwire flares are in the game, so he's using them a lot. Or in this case, it's sort of it's the mortar flare, I guess, but uh It's just uh I feel bad for Inker because I know like what it's like to be in this position, right? And just you feel so powerless. What amazes me though, Orange Pest, is, is Love Nest has been doing this since like 2016 era. Like, you know, the spamming the the smaller, lesser used abilities in the game. And um especially the Soviets trip white flares and actual flares. But uh you know, other players don't seem to do it anywhere near as much. Also we saw the spotting scopes in the in the previous game. He spams them. Yeah. And it's just stuff that's in the game, but no one else tries to copy him. Also, like a playstyle thing too, partially. You no, know, um, it's like having spotting scopes requires you to be a little bit more passive, so you have to stay still to use them. Mm. Definitely, like just utilizing the smaller things. Yeah, good point, babe. He was using the vehicle crew repairs as mechanized earlier on. You're right, and I think that just helps him play uh, endurance grand down. Yeah. That one really got killed. I know he died, but this time he really died because I saw a Panzer IV shot go through his head. This is these mines being so impressive. Tigers um, up to eight kills now. Oh god, 60% through veteran C1 is taking forever. As I say, that's the meta game for there. When you got a tiger, it's all about trying to get it to veterancy. Oh, Katusha shotgun rounds on the Grenz. He splits them. Has he done enough? Probably not. Ouch. I think Inka has to make a play now. He's just making too many bad trades. So he's just going to have to grit his teeth, you know, and just try and punch through. Even like, it's like one of those hard decisions to make, especially if you're down a game too. Just like oh, definitely. push in, but sometimes you just have to, you don't have a choice. Well, he's got the skill planes, he's got two lots of skill planes, he's got the tactical movement, he's got three G43, oh, sorry, sorry, two G43 Grenadiers. Um, obviously the packs, the two MGs, it's possible. He knows the Katusha's on time down, he's got two Minesweepers to lead the fray. I think you're right, Orange Pest, he's gonna have to do something to wrestle back control of this game. Uh, I think the worst part about this though, even if he does make a play and like kill stuff, right? If he kills, just kills like a single T-44 for example, or a few conscript models. That's just gonna free up an IS-2 for a loveness to the boy. This is what I've been saying in every Wehrmacht Tiger game in the past year. Asherblor gives me the validation I need for my opinion. The Tiger should be taking every shot. It should be on whole fight attack ground, leading the way, Orange Pest. And if it isn't, you're not gonna climb the veteracy chain. That makes I've seen Ashablor get vet three tigers in loads of games, and I've not seen Inca use the tiger anywhere near enough. As the Panzer IV is taken out from afar from the double Zisk guns, and the, here comes the, the Grenadiers pushing straight into a Maxim. Inca's got two replays he really needs to analyse here to help him close the gap. He needs to work on his blobbing skills a little bit. <laughs> no, like, no, like, I'm not even joking. Like, people will. You know, look down on blobbing as like a noob strap, but like blobbing effectively is an art form in a sense that like if you do it perfectly, you can get some really insane picks on like AT guns and MGs. Guys, just go to the Master League Discord, exclamation mark Discord in chat. All of the maps and all of the resources you need to be a competitive company heroes player are uh, linked in the pinned section. We've got tawny rules, we've got tawny mode, we've got uh, ML maps now. It's a fledgling little competitive scene built off previously bigger scenes, but it's probably the most refined version we've ever had, isn't it, Orange Pest? Definitely the most high skill, I would say. Just the amount of tournaments we had back to back, the organization behind it. The it's easy mode these days. It's kind of like, if you keep it going, it's easy mode. These days, the Patreon funds keep rolling in, thanks to everyone that funds them. A big shout out to people like Hafiz in chat. Uh, Hafiz, rather, sorry. Um, and also, we've got s spreadsheets that I built three or four years ago that just we keep using. <laughs> Assets I created two years ago for this stream in particular, and Tightrope helps me with occasionally, and 
and stuff. Uh, just keeps keep, we keep using the same stuff. <laughs> Might as well. This game's really old. Still fun to play. Yeah. I think Inca's kind of it's gonna have to all in now. Like this, this is like this point. He has no choice, but I mean, Lumnus is floating over 900 manpower and 400 fuel, it's hard, hard to catch up when you're so behind. This means it's a, it's a good thing for the scene at least, and let's hope, hope Lovness stays motivated, he's certainly getting back to form. Because to have a thousand manpower and to be playing as lackadaisically as he is, is uh, indicative of a return to form, I would say. Considering Orange Pest handled him quite easily in, in the first qualifying tournament, I'm right in saying aren't I Orange Pest? He, no, no, it was not easy. I was, oh, was it not was easy? Okay. Dude. Fair enough, I take bad. it. I just saw 2 0 and assumed it was easy. My bad. Oh, he's going in for the Katusha. Katusha's getting out of there. We've also got Stukas going for the sky above. Let's give Inka Una the respect he deserves as the Tiger rolls in as well. Katusha's safe behind the hedgerow. Tiger's going in for the T34. Eats a damaged engine from the conscripts. Takes the T34 out. Ziss turns around on the Panzer IV. It's now the Tiger that's marooned. Does this do a quick 180 perhaps on it? And there's no infantry support at all to support this Tiger. But, and here comes the IS-2 immediately. <laughs> yeah. Indeed it does. The big Stalinium, 122 millimeter cannon, trundling down the map. Oh, doesn't even need it quite yet. <laughs> Reversing back to the factory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could just drive that ice two down the map now. And there's not much you could really do to stop them. I think Love Nest is thinking, oh, effort. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be bothered. You can just sit there, really, and watch the beefy stick down anyway. Eh? <laughs> Zany's funny. Back I go. I mean, that'd be cool if you could refund it. Here he comes, that big fat wanker. Sponsors, please consider sponsoring us. I thought you were meant to be the PG one. <laughs> I get bored after a while. I try. <laughs> I do try at the start, OP, but then the game wears me down. All this blood and carnage. Ashablaw. Um, I think this is another good comment from Ashablaw. Very good to see Big Tank. <laughs> I For love real. it. That's biggest based. tanks are the best ones. They're the best ones because they're bigger than the other ones. That's what yeah. I like about them. That's why the Jag Seeker is the best tank in the game. Oh, yeah, it is. I love getting them in 4v4 and getting flanked by uh, Ranger Blobs with Bazookas or something. <laughs> <laughs> Alpern, that literally happened once. Do you know the story of Valio Carpets? Go to Reddit Tournament 3 or Flexi Time Tournament 3 or whatever it's called. We were sponsored by Valio. Oh, you do know the story. You've been watching my streams for too long. Tiger right. Tank. Here comes the final assault. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, so we can go on a long hiatus and wait for well, my grand finals. Is reaching its limits. I'll yeah, tell you when your throat's reaching its limits. As the IS-2 pushes in, Conscript's forced away. Grenz are desperately trying to cap the central victory point in the west. Meanwhile, T-34 watching on takes out the sandbags. MG's now in danger. I'm in danger. He got the decaps. He's buying time, but buying time for what? He's secure mode capping. <laughs> Love of this with the BM. Oh, he might actually lose it now. Ooh, huge shot through the rear there by the, the 122 mil. Pax answer back though. Pushing it off the map. Inkauna still alive. He only has 12 He's victory very, points, however. Very greedy from Lugfest. He just like... wants to finish the game off. Yeah, but he's doing it in a really weird way. 
If, if, if Inca actually pushes in now, he does a good chance he actually picks off that ice too. Oh, not if the Ziskons do that to him. <laughs> that. Here comes the flare. Here comes the Katusha's pack. Do they evade? It looks like it. Well played by Inca. Is Loveness going to get a little bit frustrated he can't finish the game off as quickly as he'd otherwise like to? I can't tell if he's like getting annoyed or like thinks he's like so far ahead that like Inca should surrender. It's, it's like this one of those situations, right, where the only way Inca will really win here, I think, is if Love Nest, like, throws. It's possible, but very unlikely. Alright, we're at 46 FPS. Let's see what Smoke does to us. Ooh, 23. Good work, GTX 1080. You're doing well, son. Enemy forces are securing our territory. GTX uh, 1080 that Relic uh, paid for back in 2017. Thanks, Relic, for sponsoring GCS1. <laughs> yes, Zany, I just heard a helicopter take off in the corner of the room. <laughs> uh, not actually Far Lion, because obviously I've been testing a lot of Co3, and I actually cast DevM versus Aimstrong in Co3 with this computer, and it worked really well, and that's an experimental build. So I might just wait. Old tech is best tech, isn't it, Orange Pest? But I use new tech, and I'm... <laughs> my O2 runs bad, so yeah. <laughs> but my i7's overclocked to hell. It's like 4.6 or something. My RAM's really fast. It's got DDR4 RAM. And this graphics card's an oldie but a goldie. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with this. Alright, here comes the Intel Assault. Let's see what he can do. Here he comes. He's sitting on a mine, though. That's not a good position to be in. Ooh, nice target weak point by Inca. T34 in a little bit of peril. Oh, yeah, and yes. Is. The storm shuts on the field. Dane somewhere squeals in excitement. If I was loving this right now, I'd just wait for these scout planes. Or so, tax the boy and then just grab center. Mm. Need something. Okay, T the IS2 is going to go through the center. Tigers. Now at Vet 2. That happened quickly. 24 kills. Not too shabby. It's only took him 20 minutes. I know, right? Oh, those packs are in danger, though. Oh, well, the second salvo it. could be a bad one. How did it evade that? That's a Vet 2 pack. It needs to stay alive, and he's doing a good job of it. Meanwhile, the folks ready is... Sorry, folks ready is... The conscripts can't get the Mosin shots off to finish the job. They're stopped at every turn by LMGs and HMGs. I feel like Loveless might have run into a bit of a stamina issue here. Do you think? It, it feels very like... I don't know, I don't want to say sloppy because that's not right, but it's... It not... is sloppy. It's impatience. I agree. He's played sloppily and impatiently. He's not combined his forces to attack and to finish things off. He's come in drips and drabs. And to be quite frank, it feels like he's a little bit distracted and he's a little bit like, oh. This is sort of like Vi-League. <laughs> uh, well, I guess not... going with the host win. Okay, interesting. Liking it. Might take out some of those uh, pesky Sturmoviks. The uh, Lovnus has yet to use because he's just going to keep spamming flares, it looks like. Excellent point, OP. I actually don't know why he's getting it. Um, well, he has 12 victory points, and they're excellent at keeping victory points. Yeah, but he could just get a Panzer 4. Yeah, it would be better overall, but still good at, like, chomping away at squads. Especially if he keeps his two packs alive. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, Katusha, where's this one going to land? Is this again on the packs? Oh, the Stug takes a bullet for the team there. Oh, Grenz are in peril. Oh, that could be bad. Was this what Loveness needed? No, they escape for now, but the combat as he is go forward. He's put enough pressure down. Now's your time, Ostvin. Show us what you can do. Yeah, but now it's just going to get immediately forced away by these Suskuns. 
Oh, he needs to get behind the shed. He's in the open. That's not the perfect positioning for an Osvind. Right, tactical movement engaged. He's marching into the victory point. He needs to get on the line. He's being burnt alive. Oh, no. It's just desperation, but he has to do this. There's no other choice. Now the packs are going to have to get on the line. This is really desperate stuff. Oh, dear. He goes in the capping circle for a while to allow the Pioneers to alive. That was really good tag teaming action, by the way. Tigers keeping the western flank. Unlock. These pioneers are going to have to die where they stand. The conscripts are forced away, but here comes the IS-2. Here comes the T-34. Can the packs return fire? Of course they can. The tiger needs to get active. The Osvin's keeping up the rear guard. This is tense stuff. The victory point remains neutral. Just by the skin of his teeth, man. That was one mistake there. It would have been too be. Conscripts go down. As a vet 3, 7 man con. Packs return fire on the IS-2. Oh, this could be good. This could be really good. Oh, it gets out of there just about. And the Grenadiers keep Inca in the game. Everyone breathe. Except that Gren. He's dead. This mortar has actually paid for itself pretty well. 17 kills. Not too shabby. Alright, he's going for another desperation cap. Trying to get rid of this uh, MG. And oh. if he loses the conscript, it's bad. That's what I'm saying. He's playing sloppy. You were right the first time. Yeah. Oh, he died! G43 snipes him on retreat. Another sloppy loss for um, one of the mightiest really have players sloppy look ever. At that tiger <gasps> tiger oh, going down, has, though. That's blow. bigger news. This is attracting him. Oh, they want it. Or do they? Is he giving up on it? Tiger's going to be out of action for a while. Pioneers, one of them's vet too. They both have mine supers. Should be back in time. Stug's now exposed. I think if I was Loftus right now, I would just be on P3476, seeing my bank to resources, just to, to just throw a distraction unit right into his uh, rear line, just to force him to respond. Yeah, he's at 83 pop cap, 1,100 manpower. Just throwing single units onto victory points with no care. Do you know what this? Do you know what this reminds me of Orange Pester? You know I look, watch a lot of boxing, right? Boxing's right. really good because it's one of those brutal forms of human suffering, and it puts people, it tests people. But what happens when they've got really good boxers? Really good boxers. Sometimes they uh, get complacent versus weaker opposition, and they don't box as good as they can do. And they get kind of, they're not motivated, and they fall prey to shots they wouldn't usually fall prey to. And this is what Loveness plays remind me of. He's got, he did have 1,000 manpower at a moment there. He's not treating Inca with respect he's deserved. And I'm not saying he doesn't respect him as a person, I just mean in terms of the play. And he's gotten sloppy. And Inca's now surviving on 12 victory points, and all of a sudden Loveness is on 158. Yeah, but I think we're going to see now a killing blow. It's going to be the Stug, a Tiger, and the Pax against 285 from the Nice 2. That's not good odds. Yeah, true. He's rebuilding his forces as well. Got new conscripts out, and the T 34 out. 95 pop cap with a different arrangement. Katusha's overshooting here. Pax should be safe, should be in the operative word. We've got conscripts thinking of cap, we've got a Vet 3 MG stopping it happening. Meanwhile, here come the fresh cons from. The new 17 year old recruits. Bit of a weird play with the conscripts there. Because he's got the T35 queued up, he's just not able to use it now. MG suppressing combat engineers in the west. IS 2 is operating in the east. The Sturmgeschutz is thinking of firing on him. The lack of the assist barrages too is kind of weird. Yeah, that's so true. Get the moon, apparently. Oh, what's when he's in danger? Ooh, misses the final kill. Final Flares shot. igniting all of this. Maxim's firing up those shots. He's got a T-34 ready to come on as soon as his pop cap decreases. Stug's getting blocked there. Needs to get out of it. 
All right, Cons continue trying to cap. Grens stay on the line. We've got more Grens backing them up. We've got a push coming in on the Tiger. It's a Vet 2. T34 going for the Ospin kill. Gets it. Can he retreat to safety? The packs are out of position. He should be fine. Solid pick up and now the second 85 coming out of the field. Now that's immediately going to spring back, John. Yep, IS-2 is doing the combat repairs as well. We've got Vet-3 Mortis still wailing away. Double Vet-3 Zis guns. They've both got full armor health on the actual weapon as well, so they're basically as good as you can expect to have in terms of AT capabilities and competitive. There's a big problem though now. Look at Alumnus' infantry. You can't reinforce any of it. He's having to use tactical movement in desperation in Chris here. He knows he was weak for a moment there. We've also got the Katusha. This could be the death. Right, the tactical movement Ooh. gets him over the line. And he keeps the cap. He keeps the victory point. He would lose one of those veteran packs. That could be massive, especially with an extra T-34 on the field. Combat engineers, however, could die. Oh, they survive. I think we're nearing the tipping point. Where uh, the IS-2 and the double eighty fives, like a two shot combined, will just make it too hard. Speaking or, uh, of that, Orange Pest, I can see something moving on the peripheries of the battle. The Tiger exposes itself, and it's got a restraining order against it. It shouldn't be doing these kind of things with young children around. Tiger's backed into a corner. T thirty four. They push in. This is bad. It's going to try find that rear armor. There is a pack, though, that got a shot off, but this is a Vet 3 T-34 with that maneuverability bonus. Alumna sitting AFK in the plane circle. I don't... Oh, the Zis. Is, look at the positioning on the Zis. Yes, Vet 3 T-34 is down, but there's a Vet 2-1 joining the fray, and the Zis guns are in position as well. Takes off the Stug. Gonna get the VP. And Inca make, makes a big misplay on the right side. Moved away his grounds when he could have been decapping. Oh, can he get there in time? You know the maximum. Oh, the finish. goes down to the planes. Does it? Bloody hell! Yeah. That's Lumnus just making misplays. All right, tactical movement over the line yet again, keeping himself alive. And all of a sudden, oh, by the way, Vet3 Tiger pushes up on the ice too, but bounces a shot. Ziskun's pu pu pushing into position, but the Pioneers see them. The Tiger has to back out of there, surely. So confused. What? People say that Katusha wasn't even in the circle. He sure is a misplay. How did it get killed? Uh, he ran it forward. So the ice was targeted by skill planes, right? Oh. It sort of ran forward. Oh, I see it. I see into it. The, yeah, it was... So that's bad. Right, all of a sudden, Inca, and look at the repair speed on these pioneers. I tell you, Vet three Tigers win games. He's got a Panther coming out as well. This could be an amazing victory. Just feel like Lumnus is getting really sloppy now. Before it was like passable, but this is just that's still <laughs> in the plain circle, man. Look, he's queued up two T thirty fours. He needs one big push to finish things off, Tiger again. Giving a lot of veterancy away to everything. Oh, he, he, now he's building a fleet of his T-34. Yeah. Just the Soviet industry is kicking into gear. Oh dear. Oh dear, conscripts are getting to the central victory point. There's nothing there to stop them. The Vet 3 MG was out of position. The Grens equally so. We still got tactical movement. 14 munitions. He needs to get in there and do it. He needs to make it happen right now. It's going to get dangerous now. There's the tactical movement. MG sets up. Oh, the Ziskun's waiting. The T-34 waiting. Panther pushed away immediately. Where's the Tiger on all this? Too damaged. I think he's afraid of rolling it up to the Ziskun's as well. Oh, a lot of work's got to be done. That's just a neutral victory point. And Love Nest is now down to 72 Orange Pest. Look at some of these stats as well. Absolutely heinous battle here. He's setting up a two-pronged assault right now. He's going to hit the left side BP and probably the center one at the same time. Our opponents are seizing a sector. All right, we're going to have a Vet 3 IS-2 soon. <laughs> He's at 60% on his Vet wheel. 
Stops the cap in the west. Exposes himself in the centre, though, due to the Grens not being into position. Now he's got to go over to the centre, which was only neutral, don't forget. And he only has 12 victory points. He cannot allow this to happen. Vet 3. Uber Tiger. I'll tell you what, he's going to have to go in with the pack, possibly. No, the cap oh, is completed. No. This could be the end. 11 victory. He's now got to wrestle. He's got to wrestle control back. He recruits a pack, but he's lost a Vet 3 pack. Tiger's going to have to go forward and put right itself in a compromised mine. position. Mine in perfect position. Panther needs to get these penetrations in on the rear armor of the IS-2, but the Zissis are opening up. Can he get the cap? He's got six victory points remaining. IS-2 remains. Tiger takes it out. Now it's going to get taken out itself by T-34 fire, but the bigger news is four victory points. He saves it just in the nick of time. But now, with the Tiger gone, it's one pack against three T-34 85s. Oh no, four to be soon as well. He's got a Panzerfall coming out. Oh, this pack needs to do work. It needs to hit. If a pack ever needs to hit a tank, it's right now. Somehow, just by some miracle, four is VPs. How is he still in it? I... I Inca's gonna need nothing short of a miracle now. He's gonna need to bless each of his packs. He's only got one pack. He really needs rude. He does. Oh my god! There's 40, 34s. It's done. There's no way. I mean, the infantry army's a little bit better, I guess. Kind of. If he had a teller. Oh, maybe. he's going a panther. Interesting. Oh, the yeah, Vet but... 3 MG is going to be clutch. It has to be clutch. He has to keep it alive at all costs. But the T-34s uh, yeah, can take it out. Lost, actually. Uh, the left side is going to get taken for sure. No, he's taking uh, the right side at the same time. Yeah, but should be just re-rolling up and using the secure oh. mode on the T-34 85 here. True, that's a, g a great call, Orange Pest. He could have won the game. Yeah, but, but he doesn't. Okay, so he's I think he's still in it. Just about. He's having to... Oh, he's got the packs pushing up. They're going to expose themselves on the western flank, perhaps. In, right now, it's a question of just raw numbers. Like, at a certain point, <laughs> just too many tanks on the field, you know? Oh, God. This is great. I'm enjoying myself anyway. Is everyone enjoying themselves? You want to see this content keep coming in month after month, year after year? Please go to Patreon forward slash uh, Master League. And give us $10 a month. It's like a Netflix subscription or a whatever subscription. And you'll see plenty of great tournaments, including some um, very big unannounced tournaments coming soon. And then some spectacular 2v2 events, possibly in the summer. T-34 hits a mine. The Panther's now on the field. And he's got to stop this happening. The MG's getting there. On the western side as well, we've got conscripts behind heavy cover. This could be the end for Inca. He could be now out of this qualification event, possibly. Panther goes forward looking for a snipe on the T-34. Will it be able to get it? Can he keep the pioneers in the central capping circle? Oh, I'll tell you what, Panther's having a field day. Yes, he, he is doing his best trying to save this game. He's like a fireman trying to save a pretty house. <laughs> he is. He's trying to pick up the dogs, the kids. Priceless artifacts. He's got a lot in his hands, this Panther, because everything's on fire. Fresh T-34 comes to do battle. There's another. There's two fresh ones. He reduced two to low health, and now he's getting taken out by the fresh ones. That's superiority in numbers. Oh, I tell you. Oh, no. He can't stop the shots penetrating. Oh, dear. Brutal stuff. At a certain point, you know, the Soviet production, but... Only 30 VPs. If, if he manages to maybe triple cap. Oh, it's it not gonna happen. Chance. No, there's a fresh conscript here. It's got six men. It was a matter of time, but you've got to give it to Inca. Maybe this game finished in the delay. Maybe he's out there in chat. Please don't say anything in chat if you are Inca. But uh, it looks over to me. If he rescues it, I'll be absolutely gobsmacked. Right, G43 Grandiers in the center. These guys are capping over oh, There we the see the secure mode. mode. Yeah, and oh. the crush, and the Faust. All right, he gets the right side. That should close the game out. Unless some miracle happens. I gotta say, though, considering the odds Inca was up against, right? Um, 
With like, I can uh, take him out. He can still cap it. He can <laughs> still cap it. He's got one HP on that Gren. The pack takes out the T34. There's He's got no, the central one. No He's not dead yet, Orange Pest. Somehow, some way, there's life in the Romanian dog yet. How is he doing this? Right. Enemy can taste defeat. They only have 10 points remaining. We've got a classic Company of Heroes death struggle. With fingers around his throat, Inca tries to break the knuckles of Love Nest. And it's a race for the finish. Four victory points each. Everything get over the line. They've got to keep it going. Love Nest is now down below Inca. It's 4-2. The Grens, the MG, they need to get over the line. He needs to survive. One victory point remains. One MG. And Inca takes it. One of the most historic victories in Company of Heroes history. How the fuck did he do that? What, what the, the hell? Fuck? What the oh. hell? <laughs> he crawled. He crawled in suppression. This one, one MG. He somehow got there. You'll find, you'll find him there. I can't even see him. The smoke and debris all around him. Holy effing shit, man. There he is, there he is, there's the dude, the one that crawled over the line. That's the man, I found him. He's still alive and he won the battle for Inca. What the, f Jesus Christ was that? What? <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm in disbelief right now. That was, oh my God. had a bank of a thousand manpower. <laughs> Almost like at one point he didn't have like 500 fuel, and he had like 40, 34. How did you lose? <laughs> Complacency breeds disaster. You know, it, Love Nest was the American Empire in the 20th, late part of the 20th century, and in this case, Inca Una was some guys planning the, the, the terrible things. What I mean is, like, you think you're on top of the world, you think you're unstoppable, you think you're undefeatable. That was the feeling Love Ness had. He felt like an empire. And, you know, the British felt really powerful in 1922. Oh, yes, the sun will never set on the British Empire. Then, all well, before you will come strolling down, complacency breeds disaster. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. You know what I mean? And you've got this feeling of... of, of, of and I'm not saying this is Love Nest, by this isn't his personality, but if you were Love Nest, you'd won two world championships. You're playing against Inca Un, who, quite frankly, isn't as polished as you are. He's not as efficient. He's not, quite frankly, as good. It breeds complacency. And then you just need one man who's ready to take advantage. And in that case, it was Inca Un, and he played his heart out in this game. He played his heart out. Uh, and uh, like, kudos to him. Like I would have surrendered multiple points in that match. <laughs> Me too, he bro. Just, he grit his teeth and he was like, "I'm winning this. I don't care if I have to lose my entire army or anything. I'm just going to go in anyway. I don't care." Oh, Actually, that's what ins needed. Uh, insane. Wait a second. Incas learns. I swear there was a situation like this on Amelie Field six months ago where he didn't do what he needed to do for a VP death struggle, and I criticized him on cast. I remember criticizing him really toughly, and I said he wasn't there yet. He needed to know, even I would know to do a VP death struggle at this point in time, and I'm trash. You know what I mean? And I think he did it this time. So he's clearly showing uh, epic gains, bro, in his uh, game sense. Because he just needed to kill everything, <laughs> let everything die, and he did it. So kudos to him. I mean, uh, it was. It... <laughs> I'm not saying I made it, Carl, but don't get me wrong. That situation. It's just. <laughs> It, it <laughs> no, I'm not trying to not say that, possible. guys. You should not lose that situation as the Soviets. This is not something you do. Sorry uh, if that sounded like I was trying to claim. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that it's not... He probably didn't listen to me, by the way. Uh, but it just shows you that he's, uh, his game sense has grown um, dramatically because he didn't do that. He had a situation like this six months ago and he didn't do it. He lay off and he, he lost the game because of it. And uh, we're seeing it a vastly improving player, quite frankly. Oh, gosh. Four, four, four T-34s against two packs. How did you uh, do it? Dude, the secure mode cap in the West as well. How can we forget? I mean, that T-34 going down to the pack, and there is the pack, by the way. It ended up dying. 
Um, that was huge. That one Gren guy, which one is he? Uh, he retreated from the left. So it's this dude here. Look how little health. He went on to cap the fuel. <laughs> I don't know, dude. What? <laughs> Look at the Gren in the West. He he not he like say I uh, saved the Wehrmacht. Instead of going home, I'm gonna go and cap this fuel point. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> oh, why is that so funny? <laughs> For the fatherland, he's got he's he's got no limbs left. <laughs> Look how sad he looks. He, he's lit I think he's on one HP, like straight up just one. Dude, he's he's literally he's being made to cap the fuel after he just saved the day by getting shot in the T34. Instead of running home, he has to cap the fuel now. <laughs> oh, exactly. He's seen some shit. Oh dear. Alright, I, I, I gotta restart now. my PC. Yes. Sorry, dude. You needed a break. We're going to an ace game now. What I, I need. I definitely need at least like a five minute break. My voice is uh, all right, dude. Um, you, you go off. We're just gonna play the ending again as a replay on stream, and then we're gonna go to a break. So I'll speak to you in a bit. Oh gosh. Everybody. So here's the P port to be on the top. Oh, that's not the right. Oh, I was right on the retreat matrix glitch. I knew I was. Not being too cocky, but let's face it, I'm being cocky. I actually don't see that. Uh, not that screen, sorry guys. There's one that says pure monitor somewhere. Yeah, this one looks better. So here's the P parts would be on the top now, second. Yeah, they, they basically it shot the fence and it made it, they kind of premonition made them move, but that's not the one we wanted to see. Epic VP race. That's the meaning. We've got a class. We've got a classic. Co Shut up, Matt. Bloody hell. I moved away from the microphone. <laughs> By the way, you can hear me get a little bit more distant. It's because I don't want to break your ears. All right. Let's watch this again. Meaning. We've got a classic company of heroes death struggle. With fingers around his throat, Inca tries to break the knuckles of Love Nest. And it's a race for the finish. Four victory points each. Everything get over the line. They've got to keep it going. Love Nest is now down below Inca. It's 4-2. The Grens, the MG, they need to get over the line. He needs to survive. One victory point remains. One MG. And Inca takes it. One of the most historic victories in Company of Heroes history. How the fuck did he do that? What, what the, the hell? Fuck? What the hell? <laughs> he crawled. He crawled in suppression. This one... One MG! He somehow got there! You'll find... You'll find him there! I can't even see him! The smoke and debris all around him! Holy effing shit, man! There he is! There he is! We've got a class! Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. There's a community. We should be happy with that. We've shared a moment, dudes. That's nice when we get to share a moment, like an epic game. Um, To be honest... That's like, um, I, I, you usually see about one of them every year, I would say, maybe every two years even. The last one I saw was actually in Co. 1, and he barbed wired the, the VP in the center at the last second. He made like a barbed wire circle around it, and then the, the, the Americans came in, and they wiped his army, but they couldn't get the victory point because the barbed wire. That was the last one I saw. Um but uh, there was one I saw as well. The most famous one ever. Like, this is probably the best one I've seen, though, to be honest. I, I don't... The, 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 the reason this is one of the best ones I've ever seen is because of the Western victory point had a, an epic moment as well. So it was two... Uh, it, was a, it was a throw, sorry. Yeah, it was definitely a throw, Felix. But what I'm saying, bro, is the... Um, there was two epic one hp moments in a row that's why that was so crazy you had the epic one hp moment with the grenadier on the left and the pack just about took out the t-34 and then an epic crawl over the line <laughs> that's uh that's crazy yeah let's hope this t-shirt becomes more relevant soon <clears throat> 
we are we have to have some excellent unannounced epic things coming soon so uh make sure you're a patreon of the the league it's the community's fund it's not just my fund there is uh, unannounced community events as well coming for the summer that was a big one wasn't it anyway now we shared that make sure you go to and watch the clip as well it'd be nice to have a big uh, view clip if we can get to a thousand views on a clip for the first time in a while <laughs> exactly rachel war paint too here we go <laughs> dolphin and whale skins oh yo joe mofo oh i didn't realize that well it felt epic to me at the time <laughs> make a wall no it's all right dude you're right it's the things you don't see with uh with the, the vision the crazy vision how's the other series going though i'm interested Attack as uh, well. so i'm interested in the other series it's only four minutes and still going fair enough yeah i, I mean we could do that era field because the reason it, it deserves its own YouTube video is because... Was Game 1 kind of shit as well? If Game 1 is shit and this is only a qualifier, I completely agree. Game uh, 1 was kind of shit. Yeah, let's do Game 2 as a, a YouTube video. And we'll put it up now so we get maximum views for, 